check that out and what a way to start off this in session piece we're down at the awesome burners hall in essex true to form i got down the night before the cameraman turned up and let's just say the early hours of this morning up until about an hour ago it got pretty hectic six fish so far topped off by this absolute beast 43 pounds and 10 ounces in this video like i say it's an in session piece i'm going to run through exactly what i'm using to catch these fish and hopefully you too can go out and bag a few winter units awesome Whenever you're going fishing at any time of the year, for me it's about getting bites. And the reason I come to Burners Hall at this time of the year is because A, it has brilliant winter form, and B, there's a lot of big carp in here as well. It's 24 acres in size, there's over 650 carp in here. Now, that's a relatively large stock of carp. Not what I would say is overstocked, but the fish hold in a couple of areas and the tactics that I've employed and that I like to fish sort of free on a spot work very well here. I've traveled a fair distance to get here and the last thing I want to be doing, you know, and I'm, I'm sure most of you guys watching this as well, you don't want to be going fishing thinking, oh, it might happen. You know, you, you want to be going somewhere where you know that once them rods are in the water, realistically, you've got a very good chance of catching. And once you've caught one, you can normally string a few together. So prior to the cameras arriving, um, I'd made the journey down more so to get a swim. Like I said, it's open access, so I had to have a well, a walk around, I suppose, prior to uh, prior to setting up. So, and I know a lot of people go home on a Sunday, so I arrived early Sunday morning, had a walk round. The peg that I'm in um, hadn't actually done a bite. The angler that was in there hadn't had a bite, but this area's got good winter form. So I knew that this peg would be a good, a good peg to go in for the duration of my session. It's center of the lake. It's an area where I know fish hold up. So this was where, you know, I, I, chose, to, uh, I chose to fish. So I set up, Put three rods onto the spot, like I know, like I do all the time. Ten bombs over the top, sat back, laid in bed, and I, it must have been half six, seven o'clock, and I was just landing, zipped up, shivering because I was freezing cold, and all of a sudden, bang, I've had a bite. Um, that followed a couple of other bites quite quickly after that, and they were some of the new stocky fish. I had three rigs that I could re chuck back out there, so I chucked three rigs back out there to the clip. Managed to sleep most of the way through the night, just before my alarm went off at six o'clock. The first rod was away, that was a 26, 27 pounder, soon followed by another 26, 27 pounder, and then bang, just on first light, the uh, the big common arrived. So yeah, so, so I suppose prior to the cameras getting here, putting that extra effort in, getting the peg, finding the spot, and uh, again, like I say, there's a lot of carp in here, and if they do get on you like they have got on me here, you can string a big hit of fish together. You know, it's long, dark, cold nights, it's cold days, drab weather, and the last thing that I want to be doing is not catching anything. This time of year, I want to be going fishing and watching the bobbins go up and down. Well, I've got the rods back out after that little flurry of activity this morning two bang on the area and I just put a little short zig off the side of it, three spots over the top, it went almost instantly. That was a little fully scaled, six, eight pounder. Rod back out, quickly shot to the van. Finn was over watching the rods and uh, it's gone off again. The lake is still quite weedy considering the time of year. So this one's found a weed bed. So I'm just applying steady pressure. And hopefully it comes out, but yeah, it seems that the action that we had last night and this morning is carrying on through the course of the day, which is good. Oh, I've got a double take. Now we're in a bit of trouble. That's a decent fish to be fair. Have a good common that. I want to see that in the net. Yes! That is a proper size common. Right, on to the second one. Boom, number two. Well, I'll put the second fish of the double tape back, which is a small fully scaled. I've managed to unhook 
the larger common in the net. Now this time of year you haven't really got a lot of hours of daylight, so bite time, which is predominantly now in the winter, sort of afternoon-ish, um, so you haven't got a lot of time, so I quickly unhooked it. He's safe, he's going nowhere. First rod I got back out on the spot, just had to quickly tie up a new rig. Very, very simple rig. New one of these on, clip it back up, fire it back out there, and you never know. There's a lot of these big burners carp in there, and uh, at the minute they seem to be obliging for a little feed, so. A lot of the lakes I fish are predominantly dominated by mirrors, so to come to somewhere like burners and to catch one big common would have been enough. But what about this bad boy? 39 pounds, one ounce, another glorious common. I can't believe it, the session has been absolutely phenomenal. That's nine fish now, a 40, a 39, a few 20s and a few doubles as well, and a couple of singles. What a phenomenal place, and we've still got a good couple of nights to go as well. What an incredible place. Middle of the day bite. They're certainly on the bait now. I don't know what to say, lost for words. Absolutely phenomenal. I think there's been a couple of key elements to this session really. Um, first things first is the accuracy. Like I say, I could have gone a long way out, could have fished into the middle, but with the winds that we've had and the winds that were forecast, it could have hindered my accuracy quite a lot. So by fishing to a sensible range, a spot that I could carry on baiting throughout the entire session, has definitely paid dividends. Keeping the bait going in little and often and knowing how much to put in and when. Now, a lot of people think, you know, put in 15, 20 spawns after a fish and you'll catch three times more than what you've already caught. It's probably the biggest thing that you can do that can push the fish out your peg. They're not massively hungry. The mix that I'm putting out isn't filled with food that's gonna fill them up, but it's enough to get them back into the air and to keep them grubbing around. And I suppose another you know, key element this time of year is, is fishing with, with natural bait. And again, being able to get that natural bait to the bottom where you're fishing. You know, bloodworm, maggots, they're both very, very light. Um, so if you throw them in the edge, you watch them sink. It takes a long time for them to sink. And you're only watching them in a couple of feet in the margin. You've got to imagine where I'm fishing is 13 feet deep. So I've got to get my bait to the bottom. And the only way to do that is to by introducing the crumb and the hemp, just to make that mix that little bit heavier. And again, like I say, that, that, that's key because these lakes all have a toe, so it's knowing that your bait that you're putting out is getting to the bottom because predominantly that, that's where you want to be fishing from. I'm not fishing from up in the water. I don't want to be fishing from 10 foot off the side of my spot. I want to be fishing for them fish exactly in line with the tree that I've picked on the spot that I'm fishing. So I suppose them three things there, so just keeping it simple, fishing to a spot that you know you can reach and making sure your bait hits the bottom. They're the key elements, I suppose, as to why this session, and I suppose why other sessions go according to plan. Hang on. But it seems to be that putting three spawns of bait out after each bite is enough to keep them there. Like I've already said, the mix I'm using is very, very bitty. Um, the smallest item of bait in there is a quarter of a boilie. It's probably gone through the crusher that hasn't quite powdered up. So there's a lot of scent and food items in there, but there's not really a lot that they can sort of mop up and move on to the next area. And it just seems that three is the perfect number. So that was the first one. I'm gonna put a couple more out. Rods are back out there, bang on, the fish are showing, so who knows what could happen. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk you through the mix that I'm using here on burners. Now, it's a very bitty mix, like I've already mentioned. Just gonna grab a handful of it here. There's not a great deal in here, but everyone knows that this time of year, naturals come into their own. So this mix is very natural bait based, shall we say. So starting off, I've crumbed up a load of manila. Now there's a reason why I've crumbed that up and I'll get to that in a minute. Secondly, I add some hemp seed to it. Third, add some maggots. I'm using white maggots, dead white maggots. The reason I'm using deads is because they sink better than lives do and then I'm fishing over 13 feet of water so I want the bait to get to the bottom. Then I'm adding to that frozen bloodworm. Now the bloodworm comes in a kilo bag and you can tailor it to suit the mix that you're making. Now I don't like to use loads and loads of bloodworm and what I don't like to do and I'll get to it in a minute is I don't like to make a lot of bait up in one go. And lastly to that 
I'm adding a liquid. Now I'm using manila boilies, so I'm using a manila liquid. It's a heavy liquid, it's going to bind the bait together and it's going to get to the bottom. Now, as I was saying, the reason for the crumb boilie. When the bloodworm defrosts, you'll notice that when you grab a handful of it, there is so many bloodworm in there that you physically wouldn't be able to count them all. Now when you chuck a handful of it in the margin, it's a very light, natural bait. So getting it to the bottom is absolutely paramount. Now by putting A, the liquid, and B, the, uh, the crumbed up boilie into the mix, it gives the bloodworm something to bind to. Now when you're spawning it out, the last thing you want to be doing is baiting up in someone else's peg or off of the spot that you're fishing. And the lake that we're fishing, Burners, is open, it's windswept, and you get it under tow, your bait's going nowhere near where you're fishing. So I know with this mix, it's quite tacky, and when I'm putting it into the spawn and it's hitting the clip, it's dropping down in a bit of a clump, and all of the bait that's in the spawn is going down onto the spot. One last thing you'll notice that in the bottom of the bucket here, I haven't actually made a lot of bait up. Now when you're fishing with natural bait, such as bloodworm, maggots, casters, the last thing you want to be doing is making a massive bucket of bait up and leaving it at the front of your peg. One of the things is even though it's cold, it's in the winter, when the lid's on the bucket, the sun penetrates through the bucket, it's a natural bait, it warms up inside the bucket, it's no good. And secondly, I don't want it going black and going off. And by making loads of it up there, it's not fresh, it's not kept in your cool bag. You're opening your bucket through your session and as you're going through the trip, your bait's just turning and it's going off. So I make enough bait to spot out. So in the bottom of here, I've probably got 10 or 12 spawnfuls worth of bait, which I'm gonna put out. It's just getting dark in about an hour's time. I'm gonna put all this out. I'm gonna wash the bucket out, back in the bivvy, crumb a bit of boily up, and then leave the crumb in there, ready to make the next mix. And like I say, as soon as you've had a fish, mix a little bit more bait up and you're only doing it a couple of handfuls at a time and even though you do go for a bit of bait this way you know that every bit of bait you're making up is fresh and you're not wasting loads of bait in the bucket so that's the mix all we have to do now is get that out there so i'm going to go and put a few spawns of bait up Last night didn't quite go according to plan. Um, the fish never turned back up in numbers like they did on the first night, but I did manage another one, about 10 or 12 pound, I suppose, nothing massive again. Woke up this morning, about up past seven, eight o'clock, um, looking out and they just started showing. Now this time yesterday, I had to pop down the shops and the lad who was opposite me had a couple of bites. I wound them in, even though I suppose you could say, yeah, it might still be prime bite time, wound them in, didn't need to change the hook baits. The maggot hook baits were absolutely fine. They've not been touched since I had the last bite at two o'clock three back out on the spot, another 10 spots over the top, and fingers crossed, the weather now is a little bit more settled, 10, 12 degrees, light southerly wind, it's looking bang on, there's definitely fish still in the area, so uh, yeah, the rods are out there, all that's left to do now is have a little bit of breakfast myself, and hopefully the bobbin start bouncing again. The average size of fish in here, um, to be honest, I didn't really know too much about the average size prior to me getting here, but speaking to a few of the regulars and, and you know the bailiffs here, they told me that there's 85 to 90 fish over 30 pound and there's also 12 over 40 pound. And again, like I said, the reason I come here is because it has brilliant winter form. And this session has sure proved that, you know, I've got extremely lucky. Um, I'm not gonna say, you know, there's any element of skill in it because you can't pick and choose what picture pitch hook bait up. But to come down here, this is only my second ever time visiting here and to catch what I believe is the biggest common in the lake followed by another one of the big ones as well, you know, is testament to the stock in here. And it's an open access day ticket water. They also run a winter membership on here as well. You just have to contact them and you have to book on.
Well, I got done about half an hour ago. Um, there's a few little stockies in here and fishing a long way out with a four ounce lead. And uh, yeah, had a bit of a, an occurrence, picked the rod up, nothing on there. Massive crosswinds picked up now, so it is making the fishing slightly more tricky. Um, you are allowed bait boats on this particular venue, but I'm opting not to use one. Introducing three spawns after each bite. Struggled to get the rod back out there, hit the clip perfectly. Half an hour later, bang, it's away again. And I've got another carp on, so uh, I'm gonna focus on this one. It seems to be finding every weed bed possible. She's in, and that is another half decent fish. £30 for, that will do. There it is, another Burner's Bruiser, £30 and four ounces. Like I say, I got done by one earlier, and about an hour later, this one ripped off. Mate on the far side, he had one exactly the same time. This one seemed to find every single wee bit on the way in, but everything held firm. The barbless hook done its job, stayed in all the way in. There we go, second 30 of the trip. Lovely. through the rig now that I've been using here at Burners and in fact a rig that I've used for the last couple of years to great effect. It's a very simple rig, not many components to it but it works and it does exactly what I want it to do. First things first, the material itself. It's a 19 pound Illusion. Now this is the uh, Illusion reel line and the reason I use it is it's massively inconspicuous and it's got an element of stiffness to it as well and I'm chucking this rig out as a single so I don't want to be chucking out you know a, a non-coated braid rig and, and any risk of tangles I know this will not tangle or should I say it's 99.9% .9 tangle proof the finished rig is normally about 12 inches long so by, before I start tying the rig I'm pulling off probably 14 inches very very simple like I say straight down knotless knot to a size 4 barbless this is a stiff rig pattern hook. Now I find it works best with this rig for some unknown reason, but this is the hook that I've caught a lot of fish on and I have maximum confidence in. So all I'm doing, rather than tying a boily, like a boily loop on the end, I suppose, I'm leaving an inch, inch and a half tag end out the back of the hook, 10 or a 12 turn grinner knot, pulling it back up through and your hook's attached. All you're doing then, micro hook ring swivel, poking it on the little tag end that you've left out the back of the hook, passing it back through the eye of the hook and blobbing it down. Now, you can make the D on the back of the hook as big or as small as you want. Me personally, I suppose a centimetre, if you like, just so the bait's got enough movement. And that's pretty much the rig complete, other than threading on an anti-tangle sleeve and tying a figure of eight loop in the end to attach it to your quick change swivel on the end of your leg clip setup. In terms of hook bait, now, again, this time of year, natural bait, absolutely brilliant. It definitely gets you the extra bites and the way that we're fishing and what we're fishing with, a small little natural hook bait over the top definitely seems to work perfect. Threading a piece of bait floss through the eye of the swivel, doubling it back on itself, pulling down a small piece of foam. You can use a small piece of foam, plastic uh, corn, a piece of cork, or indeed you could use a little uh, wafter or a little pop up and trim it down. Threading six to eight maggots on the end of a, uh, on the end of a needle passing it back through, tying them down into a tiny little ball on top of the piece of foam. And what that does is it sits critically balanced in the water. Now the fish this time of year, they're not feeding hard, they're ghosting over the spot, the mix that we're using is quite light, they're wafting it up with their pecs, and the last thing you want is a bait that's anchored to the bottom. So by adding a little piece of foam to counteract the weight of the hook and the maggots, you've got a nice light hook bait on a rig that you know is not gonna tangle and that the fish probably can't really see because of the fluorocarbon and you know that when that hook goes up it's going to spin around and it's going to set firm in the fish's bottom lip and fingers crossed the fish that you hook is going to end up in your landing net. Here 
here we go, number four of the day. Exactly the same amount as I caught yesterday, around about the same time. We've had a fair bit of consistent weather now for the last 24 hours and it's probably 10, 12 degrees. Light southerly winds, the weather couldn't be any better for this time of year. Fingers crossed, tonight is a bit more productive than what last night was, but on full team fish now and the quality and the stamp of fish we're catching here at Burners. Does it really matter if I don't get another bite? Of course it does, of course I want to catch a few more. But yeah, so far, full team fish. And uh, yeah, this stunning 27 pound common as we go into the evening. Coming into the evening time now, it's been a, another brilliant day down here at Burners. Five bites landed for, um, I think the one that sort of come off was a bit of a, an occurrence off of a smaller stocky, but yeah, landed some good fish today, up to over 30 pound. And you can probably see through watching this video that Burners is quite an open windswept lake. Now when I arrived here, it wasn't very windy, but I knew through the course of the trip that it was gonna become sort of gradually windier. And today it has been quite, you know, it has been quite windy. As I said, you can use bait boats on here. I'm opting not to use one, but I could have gone and fished a lot further out than what I am. Um, but with the mix that I'm using, I wanna make sure I can get everything as accurate as possible. And by going 120, 130 yards, which I'm allowed to fish from this peg, I just don't think it would have been a sensible move. So I've kept it just under 100 yards and I know then that any wind I can hit that spot and today's proved that you know we've had quite a strong crosswind and the distance and the accuracy hasn't been impaired at all and I've been able to sort of drill the spawn down the same hole every time. I started off fishing with three rods on the spot. Um, the lake itself is actually quite weedy so what I've done is I've taken one of them rods out of the equation and I've dropped it down to two rods. The right hand rod hasn't done a bite um, since the first night. So there's no point leaving that rod out there because all that was happening is on a couple of occasions I've wiped the other two rods out and with the way that the lake is and the weed and the lines up and down over it, all that's happened is I've ended up bringing all three rigs in matted together and having to re-spool. So I've taken one rod out of the equation, I've got two rods now, absolutely bang on and uh, even I've probably got an hour, hour and a half before it gets dark, I'm not going to recast them. They've landed spot on, I've got bait over the top of them, so fingers crossed. For a bit of consistency in the weather going into tonight there's going to be a few more bites to be had tree but that tree there yeah oh, he's in fin didn't really get that one very well going in the net <laughs> <laughs> check this little one out I know recently they put a few mirrors in here, but this little common here is a literally perfect miniature of the two big commons that I've already have. And uh, yeah, what an absolutely stunning fish. Exactly the same time as last night and the night before. Eight o'clock bite. Like I say, you can't pick and choose what picture bait up, but these things grow on to be the big ones and uh, they've all got to start somewhere. But what an absolutely immaculate little common. Awesome, hopefully he's the start of what might be a good night, you never know. So unfortunately last night didn't quite go according to plan. Um, the action that I'd hoped for just didn't happen. Um, heard the fish out there but for some reason or another that uh, common was the only bite that I had. So not long been up, had myself a coffee, I've cranked the rods in, clipped them all back up fresh hook baits on and I'm going to get them back out on the spot because roughly around 10 o'clock is when I've had a bite the last couple of days. The only difference today is there's a few guys turned up opposite and like I've already mentioned you are allowed to use bait boats here. They are coming right out. It's hard to, to tell exactly how far out they are but then they're, they're not far from where I'm fishing so I'm going to stick to my spot because it's an established spot. I've caught fish off of it um, but yeah you know if nothing else transpires then so be it but as, it's, as it stands now, it's looking good for another couple of bites. So I'm going to get these back out there. I'm going to put another five spots out. Even I've been putting three out after each fish. I'm going to go for five just to rev it up first thing in the morning. And fingers crossed, come 10 o'clock, it should uh, hopefully start happening again. This time of year, you haven't really got many windows of opportunity. You've only got sort of eight to 10 hours of daylight and what I would say probably four to five hours of good daylight. Now what I mean by that is when the sun's at its highest. Now even though it's a cloudy day today, as the sun comes up, it, you might not feel it, but it is generating more heat. So like I say, you haven't got a lot of time 
from when you wake up to actually when you go to bed. And by the time we've done a little bit of filming and you know had a couple of bites, the day just, just flies by. So before I go to bed every night, I've got three fresh rigs that are prepared. I've got a little bit of bait that's at the bottom of the bucket that's ready to go. So I know then that when I wake up in the morning, it's just a case of putting it back in the clip, winding them in, clipping the fresh rigs on, back out on the spot and three rods over the top, just maximizing the chance that when that rod goes off, I can get the rod back out as soon as I possibly can. I'm not shaking because I'm nervous, I'm shaking because I'm freezing. The temperature is absolutely plummeted. It's a bit of a drab, dark day if I'm honest. And uh, yeah, this bike just come randomly out the blue, middle of the day. First bite I've had since daylight hours. Yeah, hopefully I don't shake the hook out of it. I'll, uh, I'll get it in the net. Well, the action has slowed down somewhat today and it's not a bad thing, I suppose because this fish is probably gonna conclude my session. Trip's coming to an end now, but an absolutely brilliant session. It's been down here at Berners Hall. Untold amounts of takes, including one of the lake's largest commons, 43 pound 10, backed up with another 39 pounder and another 30 as well. Just goes to show, getting on the naturals, keeping it simple, know where your bait's going in, making sure your bait's over your rigs, and fishing sensible certainly keeps them bobbins bouncing. As the session's gone on, the weather's got increasingly worse and yesterday was probably the worst weather that we've had. Um, even at one o'clock in the afternoon, I still needed a head torch inside the bivvy. It was really drab, dark, horrible grey day. And to be honest, the action had slowed down somewhat, but a lake like Burners, there's a lot of big carp in here. And this time of year, if you're not getting a lot of bites, there's always that chance that it could potentially be a good one. Um, about 11, 12 o'clock, I decided to do a rechuck. Two rods back out on the spot, three more spots over the top, sat in the bivvy, and uh, one o'clock again, and that's, uh, that's three days in a row now, one o'clock's been the bite time. Had a 24 pounder, brilliant. You know, that was gonna be, hopefully, or should have been, the, uh, the, end, the end fish to end the session on. Well, just when I thought it was session over and that that 24 pound con would have been my last fish, I had another bite and I knew, as soon as I picked it up, I went rather quiet and I knew it was a good one. And uh, it is absolutely massive. I've not got it out of the water yet. I'm gonna break it down, transfer it into the retainer, lift it onto the mat. It's huge. It is absolutely huge. Right, let's get it out. How about that? I honestly don't know what to say. Burners Hall, it's been absolutely fantastic. I thought the fish an hour ago was going to be the last one of the trip, but out of nowhere, it trundled off. And this common, which I believe is called Patch, 44 pound, eight ounces. Unbelievable session. A 39 common and two 40 pound commons. Check it out, get yourself down here. Look what's in here. Incredible.